Despite suspicion to the contrary, the Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigeria's Apex Bank, has said it followed the law in its plan to redesign the Naira. We'll look at the development since the announcement of the plan. And the Chief Justice of Nigeria has told politicians in the country uh, to allow the judiciary to do its job as constitutionally expected as the 2023 elections approach. On the breakfast today, we'll analyze and unpack more of what he has had to say recently. And in Off the Press, we bring you in-depth analysis of some of the headlines on today's newspapers, uh, newspaper front pages that we have a guest joining us ahead on the program. We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. And of course, we bring you the breakfast. Interesting uh, conversations uh, throughout the program from now uh, till it's uh, 9 a.m. or just about 9 a.m. So please, I encourage you to sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. Of course, you can do that with a cup of tea or coffee, whatever it is that you drink, and, uh, and just enjoy the program while it goes. My name is Kofi Bartels once again. As usual, we start off with a look at what's been trending and the conversations on the social space, um, which we usually bring on air. This uh, morning, we have three for you. Um, the first one happens to be a situation on the roads of Nigeria's commercial nerve center, the biggest city in Nigeria, and what is also known as the bigger, largest city in, in West Africa, most popular city certainly in West Africa, uh, the commercial city of Lagos, where uh, commercial or let's say public transportation has been ground to a near halt following the strike, a seven day strike declared by or embarked on by commercial uh, bus drivers in Lagos. These are buses popularly called Danfo uh, by Lagosians. You can see the yellow buses there. Some of them are white. Uh, not exactly uh, yellow. These buses um, are not on the streets as we speak because of a seven-day strike declared by the drivers. They're declaring the strike um, in in response to uh, or in uh, in complaint at uh, some sort of agitation, uh, oh, sorry, victimization by certain persons, uh, unscrupulous individuals, probably called Agbero. These are touts who you know, stand by the roadside at motor parks, at bus stops, and places where these buses uh, uh, load passengers uh, to collect all sorts of illegal levies uh, from them and charges from them. They're saying they're tired. They're tired. They will not do it again. And uh, they announced and embarked on a seven-day strike. Um, uh, due to this strike, uh, it could be seen uh, that uh, some passengers were stranded in parts of Lagos. I mean, I noticed some buses were moving, but most places didn't have uh, uh, commercial buses. I saw people standing at different bus stops. Uh, reporters who also went to town saw people stranded at different bus stops. Um, you can see some user-generated content right there. Uh, one of the bus stops in Lagos State. Um, those who were able, lucky enough, to find a bus to convey them to to their destination, especially work, um, had to pay more than the normal fare uh, to do so. I wonder if, even without the strike, if they would have paid uh, less uh, less than that. Uh, but um, there was partial compliance. What is was observed that was partial compliance. I personally saw uh, some buses on the road, I saw people taking commercial transportation. But it was partial compliance as some drivers, it was reported, uh, shunned the protest uh, by this uh, drivers, Joint Drivers Welfare Association. Uh, but what they did was they had to increase their fares, uh, forcing many passengers to be stranded. So I think it was a, a Christmas is coming early for those who uh, drivers refused to uh, join the strike, uh, making a killing um, at this time. Um, some of the passengers spoke to the press. Uh, we'll take some reports. Let's take one from the Tribune Online, who quoted a uh, uh, certain Mrs. Abioye um, as saying, quote, we don't know if they are on strike uh, or they are increasing their fares. Before now, she said Tollgate to Oshodi, that's a, a route in Lagos. It used to be 500 naira, uh, but today they are calling 800 naira. Agege, that was just 300 naira, is now 500 naira. What kind of strike is that? All right, so only the, these uh, persons uh, will be able to tell whether the 
the the the, the strike is <laughs> it's a strike or it's just an increase in fare. But I mean, uh, for me, well, from what I've seen, uh, you know, reports and uh, the, the videos and what we've seen, you know, online, um, even without the strike, the fares will go up because the the, the pump price of petrol has gone up to almost two hundred naira as we speak because of the uh, uh, so-called fuel scarcity. I mean, petrol stations are selling. But not all of them are selling, and they're saying there's a certain scarcity of uh, petrol, and uh, they're selling above the pump price. Um, we have to drag the department, uh, the former Department of Petroleum Resources, which is now called uh, the Nigerian Midstream uh, and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Agency. We need to call them to come on the program to tell us what is going on. Um, Why are Nigerians paying more at the pump? Uh, so transportation station fares have increased uh, from the commercial bus transportation services, these ones are on strike. Even without the strike, they would have increased their fares. Um, you look at the taxis, they've increased their fares as well. Um, I mean, it, you know, and, and even the ride-hailing apps have also increased their fares as well. Um, for those who drive, they're also paying more because of the increase in the pump price. So even without the strike, uh, people would have to pay more. Um, so. The government is really practically saying nothing to Nigerians about the petrol situation. Practically saying nothing new. You know, Nigerians are wondering what is going on. Um, government has promised them over the past few, you know, past few uh, um, months at home in December and November. You know, all that end of month scarcity will not be there. We have enough products to go around. Blah blah blah. All has turned out to be. Plain and simple lies. Lies, okay? And now we're seeing that uh, there's no petrol. So, so uh, last time we had an um, official from the uh, Petroleum Marketers Association saying, oh, it's the, the depot owners who have increased their prices. So what exactly is going on? And the government needs to come clean on what is going on. One thing we're sure is that whatever they tell the people who no, most, most certainly not be the truth, there will be more uh, to it behind the scene. Um, Nigerians have not yet recovered from, uh, some Nigerians have not yet recovered from the dirty petrol saga that destroyed their cars, their motorcycles, their generating sets, and uh, etc. And uh, they have to grapple with this now. So, uh, well, let's see. Now, the, the question on my mind as regards this uh, uh, bus driver's strike is um, what will it lead to? Will there be sort of a spillover? Spin over effect of this? Uh, will it lead to some sort of uh, uh, social unrest, maybe a social upheaval, as has happened in other parts of the world? Uh, will it affect the, will it lead the government to say, okay, we ought to clamp down on these agbar who collect all sorts of monies from people on the road? But I think that um, it, we, must, we must give some kudos to these bus drivers who in the past, it seems, have operated in fear. All right, of these uh, touts and these uh, uh, what we call Agbero in, in Lagos State. They've operated in, in some sort of fear. And it seemed nobody was, 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 was bold enough to speak up or do something about it. And they've taken the law into their hands to say, we're going to do something about it. Maybe they got the inspiration from their uh, colleagues at the Alaba market. It's a market, a popular market in a part of Lagos State known as Ojo local government area, where the traders there also went on a, 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 a protest march through the markets, you know, saying they're tired of paying us all sorts of illegal fees and levies to these touts uh, called Agberu, you know, and they had a clash, and I think a life was lost in that clash. Uh, I don't know if the Agberu have gone back to their, their, uh, their caves and their shells, or they're still collecting the money, but uh, they may have, these drivers may have gotten some inspiration from that to say, okay, uh, we're also tired as well of paying all sorts of money, ranging from, you know, 500 naira, 700 naira, 1,000 naira, 5,000 naira, some pay 7,000 naira. And you wonder how on earth do these uh, drivers, these commercial drivers, these taxi drivers make it? And then if these Agbero are, are collecting the money, uh, I mean, which amounts to <laughs> millions, if not billions of naira, uh, hundreds, hundreds of millions, if not billions of naira every month, 
who is accountable or accounting for this? And that's what has led some people to say, well, uh, Kofi Bartels, who you're looking at this morning, has famously said that uh, in legal state, there are four tiers of government. You have the federal government, the state government, the local government, and the fourth tier of government is Agbero government. Um, what is the government of legal state saying? In times past, they've been seen to perceive to be a uh, hand in glove with these Agbero because they use them uh, for, you know, for elections to try and rig elections. That's the public perception. Um, so it remains to be seen what the government will say. Um, the, the drivers also are not in support of the, uh, the setting up of what he called the Lagos Parks and Garages Committee. They're saying that committee is illegal. You know, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at how this unfolds in a matter of days uh, and months. But the drivers are showing the people where the power lies. They're showing the people where the power lies. And the power they say belongs to the people. Let's move on to our next trending segment. A um, uh, Nigerian journalist uh, whom we had on this program uh, some time ago, David Unde, has um, generated 4,450 retweets, 2,992 uh, two, quoted tweets, and uh, 13,400 likes. I don't know if the likes count in this case. But let's just keep it at 4,450 retweets. Over uh, his, uh, his idea, he, he put up a statement uh, uh, saying that um, you know, he thinks it's time to scrap the, the national service. Is what, what Nigeria, the national service for, for young people is called the National Youth Service uh, Corps uh, scheme. Now, he says, quote, I think uh, to fix the Nigerian education or to fix Nigerian education, the first thing that needs to be done is to scrap the NYSC scheme. That scheme has functioned uh, as a technical subsidy for decades, allowing states to avoid investing in qualified educational staff uh, instead of instead using coppers as cheap substitutes. Of course, most of these coppers are posted to schools. In fact, at some time, there was a, a moratorium on deploying the coppers elsewhere outside the teaching you know, which some frowned on. Um, so mostly they're sent to schools to go teach uh, from the university. <laughs> anyway, um, he's saying that uh, this has affected the education system in Nigeria negatively because for some state governments, instead of uh, training teachers, they will just sit down, simply sit down and wait for the youth corpus to be sent to their state and then they're posted to different schools. And that's it. Now, we've had conversations and on, I mean, different fora, different people, uh, on whether the NYC scheme should be scrapped or not. It was an age-old conversation, but uh, people hardly look at this aspect of states training teachers and equipping teachers, rather waiting for the NYC to, um, uh, to, to, to send uh, teachers their way, and that's it. So th that's what the man is saying. It's quite an interesting take. And some other people uh, have been also throwing their, their thoughts in on this particular um, uh, idea uh, shared by uh, the gentleman David Hune, investigative journalist. Uh, some young, another young person, Akiola uh, Jr., put up a reply yeah, to his tweet. He said, uh, Don't scrap the NYC, reorient the NYC. Um, I don't know how what that means because the NYC is an institution, but reorient the NYC. It's the largest database of graduates fresh out of the university that is a pool or, uh, that a thinking head can put to good use. Uh, redefine the objective of the commission from service to absorption into these schools, at least make it an option. Interesting conversation there uh, and uh, some of the replies coming. I mean, you can check out David's page and you see uh, the thought shared by uh, persons out there who uh, want to say something uh, about about this. But lots of other aspects to the NYC conversation that, um, uh, I mean, we can look at and we won't finish our conversation this morning. So let's go to the next one uh, that may affect me if it is true. You know, I, I, I looked at it, you know, twice when I saw it because I uh, happened to verify it on Twitter for some years now. I have a, a blue tick, uh, maybe five years or so. Um, and people would ask me, does Twitter pay you well, you know, if, if you have a, a verification and blue tick? It would be a big deal. Now, I don't know if it's a big deal. But I've been, I've been verified for, for maybe five years, if not more. Um, Elon Musk <laughs> concluded his purchase of Twitter um, last week and majestically walked into Twitter HQ 
and fired the CEO and fired some persons there. He walked in with a sink. Um, the news today, because Elon Musk has now become the chief tweet, that's the, the unofficial name of, uh, of the owner of Twitter. The news is that um, he is reportedly considering uh, making verification uh, of uh, Twitter, uh, the blue feature, that's uh, blue tick, uh, something you pay for, pay a subscription service. And uh, the rumor out there is that um, the man is considering charging a monthly fee of $20 for those who are users of Twitter to keep their blue tick verification badge. I mean, it's a status symbol on Twitter. It sets you apart. It means that you are on Twitter street. You are rolling with the big boys. <laughs> but um, that's, that's all you get from that. You don't get any payment. We also think that you're paid for that. No, it simply allows people, you know, it's meant to distinguish you from other users so that no one confuses you, especially if you're a public figure, uh, especially if you do something of note to the public and that, uh, you know, people would like to look for you. It doesn't mean that um, you have so many followers, you know, some people may have a few, but they are public figures. And what they do uh, is important to the public. Twitter doesn't want them to be confused with other people, so they'll verify them, you know. So uh, you don't get paid. It's just a, it's become a status thing on Twitter. For us to hear that uh, uh, Elon Musk, uh, in I think the first official step he may take, you know, on Twitter, public, publicly known step to charge, uh, to, you know, to charge those who have a verification a tick, $20 a month. Um, I wish him well. <laughs> I mean, uh, who told him to go pay $3 billion for Twitter? I mean, some would say maybe that was, um, maybe that was too much. I don't know what you think about this, but $20,000 for Twitter is a lot, uh, sorry, $3 billion for Twitter is a lot of money. Um, lots of analysis coming uh, our way regarding this particular move. Um, Elon Musk tw era Twitter kicked off last week. You know, like I said, he fired uh, some top persons at Twitter. Uh, and of course, um, it led to a spike in, in slurs, indicating significant changes coming for uh, the company. You know, and uh, this is a speculation I must uh, uh, point out. It has not been officially announced. And my suspicion may be that uh, this will just be the one to test and see the public uh, 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 reaction. But you can see Musk's reply right there uh, to a tweet on this, saying the whole verification process is being revamped right now. wonder what he is going to, uh, uh, to do. Um, Personally, I feel that um, uh, when, you know, I mean, Twitter has been, has been run like a sort of open platform, all right, a sort of public square, public space where, you know, the public is taken into account when uh, decisions are made. It, in fact, the public almost has a say, it almost has a say in decisions being made. It's run as a sort of um, uh, an open source platform, almost like an open source platform where people can, can engage and give ideas. It's been run as a sort of a democratic uh, a space where, you know, global norms and uh, global um, uh, uh, standards are upheld. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, when a, a billionaire who is used to giving orders uh, by such uh, a, a, a body, a business, an entity, you know, first of all, he's thinking of the bottom line. He invested $3 billion. He has to make his money back. All right? He has to make his money back. He's going to make decisions with the business bottom line in view, which was not always the case in Twitter of the past. In fact, Twitter for a long time did not operate uh, making a lot of money. No, they didn't make so much money. And unlike Facebook and their Google cousins, they were not in a hurry to monetize. You know, they were not in a hurry to monetize. They've taken their time. Uh, a billionaire number one has invested a lot of money. That's three billion dollars. Number two, he he is uh, the CEO and owner of several companies. He's used to having his way. He's used to hiring and firing. Um, he's used to taking unilateral decisions, not listening so much to people when he's taking his decisions. And he cannot move slowly. You know, when he wants to listen to several people um, in taking your decisions, he want to democratize you might move slowly and slower. And some ideas may not fit into what you're thinking. Uh, so this is what we're going to see with Elon Musk. Um, he's going to want to move fast. 
he's going to want to look at situations. And as a very intelligent person, as a genius, uh, he's going to want to take decisions quickly as possible. Um, he has his ideas. He's coming in with those ideas. He's a smart guy. I'm sure he's done his research and his calculations, and he knows what he needs to do um, to get the organization moving. But will this, you know, make Twitter keep it, you know, as, as it was, or will this mean uh, begin the decline uh, of Twitter? You know, uh, he's going to be moving like a <laughs> like a train, and anybody who stands in his way will be, will be swept aside. You can see the lady who took the decision, uh, uh, you know to ban Donald Trump has been fired already. Um, if Elon Musk wakes up tomorrow like Roman Abramovich and feels that uh, he just needs to start charging everyone, no one can stop him. He owns Twitter. Let's see how it, how it goes. Um, and uh, let's see if this will lead to the demise of Twitter or it will lead to Twitter becoming, uh, continuing to be the open space for all that it has been and for free speech as it has been. All right, but I certainly will not be paying $20 for that blue tick. And uh, if Twitter wants to, you know, charge $20 per blue tick, they can have, certainly have their blue tick back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have to go. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, that's uh, much we can take on the uh, top trending segment. When we come back, we'll dive straight into the National Daily. Today's news reports are packed with a lot of interesting uh, headlines. So please, stay with us.